let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is print off your corset sheet. And um, what we're going to do is tear the edges. Uh, we're work I'm working on a 9 by 12 canvas board. Um, I like to use uh, the thin canvas boards instead of um, actual canvas when I do mixed media because they are nice and hard. They don't bend uh, when you're working with them and they're easy to frame. Uh, so that's why I choose to work with the canvas board. Um, so print off your corset sheet and then the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of tear these edges. Uh, I don't want a straight edge. I like the look of the torn paper. I don't want to tear it back too much because I want to cover most of my background with it. Um, so I'm just kind of tearing off these edges here. And then uh, we're gonna place that right in the middle of our piece. Now for the adhesive, you can either use Mod Podge um, or you can use uh, gloss medium or matte medium. Um, these come in liquid mediums or gel mediums. Really, they're just adhesive. They do the same thing. Uh, and what you're gonna wanna do is either get some of that Mod Podge or get some of this medium and we're just going to glue this on. So I'll put a little bit, well I put a lot on the back of my page here. And then I'll also put some oops, on my canvas. going to lay this on there. I'm not too worried about exact placement, but I do want my background to be um, nice and straight. And then you just go over the top with your gloss or gel or gloss or matte medium or Mod Podge and seal that on there. And we want it to be nice and flat, so make sure that you smooth out any bumps if you have bumps. Oh, one or two in there and you can just get rid of those by pushing them towards the edge of your paper. Since our mixed media piece is going to have a lot of texture, I don't worry too much about the amount of adhesive I'm using because I'm okay with it having a little texture. It's more important to me that it's glued down than it is for everything to be smooth and perfect. So if you've got wrinkles, that's okay. If you can see your paints or your brush strokes, in your gloss medium, that's okay too. So we're going to get a nice coat on here. Uh, if you wanted to add texture, you could crumple up your paper first before you put it on there. Sometimes that adds a nice, fun little background texture. For the next part of this lesson, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take some white paint. I've got uh, a pure white here. This is wicker white or you can use a titanium white. And I've got a pearl white. And I'm going to use a little bit of these and I am going to spread it around with an old credit card or if you've got a palette knife you can use that as well. 
Um, and what this is going to do is just tone down some of this background um, and make everything look cohesive. So I've just dipped my palette, palette knife into some of this pearl white and I'm going to put it all over making sure that I get the edges of the canvas as well. Um, and you can cover really as much or as little of this background as you want. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the white and the pearl until I get coverage that I'm comfortable with. And it's not real important um, that the glue is, is dry or not um, because it will just blend in. So just use as much or as little as you would like. Now I like the rough look of the palette knife. Uh, if you like a smoother look, you could always use a dry brush technique um, or you could use a brayer if you're familiar with those, but I like to use the rough palette knife. And once I get the coverage I like, I'm going to go back kind of around these edges a little bit just to uh, smooth out the transition between the edge and the canvas, the edge of the paper and the canvas there. And then because the canvas that I have around is white, I'm going to add a little bit of this pearl to the edge just to make sure it's not a stark white all the way around. Now I like the look of having um, the corset show through. I think that adds to the spirit of the piece. Um, if you don't prefer that, you can certainly go heavier on your white and pearl uh, to make that less apparent, but it's all a matter of preference. Um, so that is step two. And then uh, the third step is we are going to get out our business suit here so um, you have this this is just a, a digital drawing that I made and so uh, what I'm gonna do to it is I am going to determine the colors of my piece with it um, and I used gold I like gold I think I'm gonna stick with that so um, I'm actually gonna this is a called bronze but it's it's kind of a deep gold I'm just gonna set this aside and let this dry uh, while I'm working on this part what I'm gonna do here mix this up a little bit these metallics separate really easily make them a little more difficult to work with than the regular acrylic. All right, so I've got this deep gold here, or bronze, or copper. Um, and I'm just gonna add some of this color onto here. I'm not too worried about staying in the lines, but I don't wanna get on the, the skin there.
And you can use any color, you know, if you wanted to add some pink to your piece or some blue or some purple or whatever, whatever colors you enjoy, you can do that. And then I'm going to cut this out and this is going to get glued onto my piece. So I'm just going to cut around the outside outline. It doesn't have to be a perfect cut. I know there's some wrinkles on here um, for the clothing, and that's okay. For the most part, I just want it to keep the right shape, so. this we're going to want to make sure that the paint on this is fairly dry before you move on to the next step and then <clears throat> we're just going to add some more of your adhesive whether you're using the medium or the Mod Podge and place it wherever you're comfortable on your background here. So again, you put some on the canvas and then you're going to go right over the top with the medium, with the adhesive. Make sure you do your edges really well. You want your edges to stick down. And then we're going to let that dry. Okay, uh, now like I said, we're going to let this dry a bit and then we're going to come back and work on it. So I would say, um, depending on the thickness of your paint, give it about five minutes and then uh, go ahead and meet me back here and we will move on to the next step. Okay, for the next step, once this is dry, is we are going to do some stencils. Um, now I'm going to use an ink pad for my stencil. If you don't want to use an ink pad, you can absolutely use paint. Just remember um, to go very lightly with it. Um, and you can choose whatever stencils you want. Uh, just remember you don't want your stencil uh, to deal the show. You want it to just be an accent in your piece. Um, I was considering going with these paisleys, uh, but I think I'm going to end up going with the birds. Um, the idea here is to choose something that goes with the idea of a strong woman. So, you know, I didn't want to do flowers or hearts. Um, that just uh, isn't what I was looking for. Um, so the way that I'm going to do this, I've got a little stencil brush here and I'm just going to tap it onto my ink pad and uh, I'm going to add some of these birds on there. And I'm going to choose birds that I feel kind of um, are strong and then I'm just going to tap this ink on there. Now the idea of mixed media is all about layers. Um, so this is just adding a little bit of layering into our piece. Um, so just be mindful about where you're placing your bird. You can use any stencil color you want. I'm sticking with a gold. I'm going to kind of go with golds and neutrals for this. Um, but however you want to do yours is absolutely fine. 
Now remember, it's okay to overlap some of these edges. It's okay to go off the side of your canvas. It's okay to cover a little bit of your image. Um, you just kind of want to spread these out a bit so that you have another layer of color of imagery. And mixed media is all about the layers. So uh, one way that I like to ensure that I'm doing lots of layers is to choose stencils for some of it and stamps for some of it. Um, so I apply my background and then um, maybe an image or two. And then I'll do some stencils, maybe an image or two, and then some stamps. So it just breaks things up a little bit and makes your eye move around the piece, which is what we're looking for. Alright, now that I've got my stencils on there, um, as you can see I didn't go crazy, I just added a few. Um, I've got six of those birds, actually I might add a seventh, I just feel like I need something right here. Um, I've got seven um, which works just based on the size you know everybody's gonna have different size stencils um, and that kind of thing but you just want to visually add a little bit of busyness into your background and uh, then we're gonna move on to the next step which is uh, gluing on our shoes so I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and then we will move on to the next step Next, I'm going to add my shoes here. Um, so, I'm going to cut these out. And just like I did with the um, suit outline here, I'm just going to kind of fussy cut these fairly close to the image. Now, I'm not going exactly on the edge, but. Close enough, I don't have a whole lot of spare paper. Now you've got sh two shoes to choose from. For this one, I am using the Converse shoes. Um, and then just like we did earlier, we're just gonna get some of the adhesive. We're going to um, put some on the canvas some on the back. I'm going to paste that on and then go over the top. Okay, the second part of this step, um, you can do two ways. If you like um, the more collaged look, you can cut out your words and just use the adhesive and glue them on wherever you would like. Um, I like to have a more handwritten look for my words. So what I'm gonna do 
is cut my words out just like this. Now you can use graphite paper to transfer um, or what I like to do a really easy way um, is just to color on the back nice and dark with a pencil making sure you're getting coverage over all the words. And then um, I'm going to put that. I like mine centered, so I'm just going to center it. And then I'm going to trace over my words here. And if it works the way it's supposed to, it will transfer. Wonderful. Now that's harder to see on the camera, but I can see it. And um, that's all that I need. So um, for this, you can either use a paint pen or um, I think I'm going to use a, a pit pen, an India ink pen. If I can find it. Let's see, where did my pen go? Got a medium here. All right, I'll use my Posca paint pen. Um, oops, or will I? Way to be prepared, Tara. Um, yeah, I think I'll give this a shot. So you can use any paint pen. I've got a few different types. Um, I prefer using a brush pen, um, but really you can use any kind. Um, this is India ink. I'm just gonna go over this with the India ink first. So I can see it better. Posca paint pen is just an acrylic paint pen. So um, the only thing I would not recommend using is a Sharpie because alcohol inks don't play well with acrylic. Um, but other than that, uh, you can even use a paintbrush, just a nice thin paintbrush if you want, and some acrylic paint. And then once you've got your words on there, you can kind of just go back over it and fix those any way you like. I'm just going to thicken them up a little bit.
remember the other option was you could just glue it on if you liked it so do whatever you prefer for that stuff but get some of those words on there um, and then I'm gonna add another layer uh, which is the next step here and my next layer is going to be um, just kind of a textury stamp so uh, two really good options are this one is uh, music notes that would work really well and this one is just some um, not legible cursive handwriting so um, you could choose really any stamp but what you want it to be you don't want it to be images you want it to just kind of add some texture in the background now I'm going to use black ink for this because I've got um, a lot of white and I want to add in some of this darker color here uh, and I think I'm going to use my handwriting stamp if you don't have stamps that is okay you don't you don't have to use stamps. You can do scribble writing with your own handwriting. I've made lots of beautiful pieces by doing that as well. Um, you can just write a poem really tiny. You can uh, write words of encouragement um, on the background. You can even just add some scribbles. Uh, so don't feel like you have to have everything that I have to make the piece that I'm making. Um, make it your own. If you are using a stamp, what I like to do is I'm going to take this black ink and I'm not going to cover the entire stamp because I want, you know, just bits and pieces. So I'm just going to tap it in a few different places and then stamp it on. And then I'm just going to repeat that process. I don't need to add the ink in the same places every time. Um, and I'm just going to change where I put it on my canvas so that I've got little bits and notes of the stamp all over the place and I'm going right over my images um, and I can go right off the edge of my canvas as well so don't feel like um, this is something that has to be done perfectly. We're just adding visual interest and color in different places. So a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, and by breaking it up, it makes the piece look a little more cohesive. So that's all we're doing with the stamp. And I could have done the exact same thing with these music notes. Um, by putting the ink on in a few different places and not covering the whole stamp um, and stamping randomly, it just gives little choppy pieces um, of the stamp there. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I have this beautiful color that I put in um, the blazer here and I just want to bring a little bit of that into my piece we're almost done um, but I just want to bring a little bit of that into my piece so again um, you can either use a credit card or if you've got the palette knife uh, like we had earlier and I'm just what the color that I used for um, my outfit here, I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of that with my palette knife in um, here and there on my piece. And this again, just adds some cohesiveness, some unity um, all over. So wherever it feels kind of empty, you can just go through and add just a tiny bit of color. Woo! Things are jumping down on top of me around here. Um, as much or as little as you would like.
Make sure your brush strokes go in all different directions. All right. Um, now while we're finishing with that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, um, my paint markers back out um, using black and white. And I'm just going to go over this sketch just ever so slightly. And I don't need to do all of it. I'm just making lines here and there. And this is going to bring part of this out. Just going to add some highlight to that. And I like to do a little bit in black and a little bit in white. So you can do this with um, a paint marker, you can do this with uh, just a paintbrush and some paint, you can do this with um, gel pen, whatever you, what kind of, whatever mark maker you want to use. And I'm just adding a little bit of white, a little bit of black, and that just kind of pops that out a little bit, makes it jump. Um, so that's just a fun little detail. And then um, one of the last things that I am going to do is put the word ladies on here. Now I want this to be um, nice and bright. I want this to stand out. So um, I'm using stamps. Again, if you want to print the words, uh, that is an option for you. Those have been um, added to your downloads, but I am going to use these stamps. These are Tim Holtz stamps. do is the word ladies is six letters so I'm going to do the first three first um, and then I'm going to do the second three and that way I can kind of keep it centered right or really it could even be off center a little bit I've got my main components pretty much complete on here and now I'm just gonna do a little bit of finishing okay so um, like I mentioned in the supply list and um, a few times through the lesson it is super important to make this your own you don't have to use all the same supplies I do actually I encourage you to substitute 
uh, and use supplies that you like, you enjoy, that resonate with you, or that you just have on hand. So um, most of this can be done just with acrylic paint. Um, so if you don't have a lot of this stuff, no problem, okay? Um, the next thing I'm gonna use is something called Distress Ink. This is basically just a little ink pad. Um, this color is antique linen, so you could also use just um, maybe a cream acrylic paint. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just add this on here a little bit here and there and smudge it in. You don't have to use a cream color if this color palette is too bland for you. Pick a color. Pick a color and mix it in. That's okay too. So I'm just adding bits of this color on here. Um, little by little. And then the last thing I want to do is add in my pearls. Am I right? So um, what I'm going to do is take my black paint pen and I'm just going to add some large pearls around this necklace here. I might even actually I might add two strands because I want them to stand out so I'm I'm just making large round circles for the necklace and then I'm going to come back through with my pearl paint and I'm just gonna dot some of this in there with a nice thin paintbrush. That's, this is pretty much it for the lesson. You can, you know, touch up here and there um, however you want. You know, maybe you want to color in this belt. Um, I just kind of want to make it stronger black here. Um, but this is all I have. Um, I'm going to frame this and um, it's really pretty uh, having the pearl and the different texture in there is just um, makes a beautiful accent so um, 
Once your piece is dry with any mixed media piece, I encourage you to seal it. You can do that um, a few different ways. Uh, if you have clear spray paint, uh, you can just give it a, a spray. Um, if you use Mod Podge, just put a layer of the Mod Podge over the top. If you used um, gel or liquid medium, just put a layer of that on the top. Or you can get um, a varnish. This um, Timeless Varnish is my absolute favorite. I always have a link to this uh, in the supply list and on my website. Um, so that's what I'll be using to seal this. But that is the lesson. I can't wait to see what you guys create with it. So if you've made this, um, I would love to see it. Please tag me at the Painted Cicada on Facebook or at Painted Cicada um, on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, thanks for joining me guys and I hope you have enjoyed your lesson.